Hello, I am Peter Swatsky, and you probably already know me from real life. You see, I'm not on here on this video to try and get famous. I'm not in it for the views. I'm not in it for the subscribers. I'm in it to help people get slightly better at music. So in my life as a amateur musician, I've gone from playing alone to in a group. Now, this arrow represents a lot of time, frustration, angst, complaining, and so on, because I had to do everything the hard way, because I just learned on my own. So, what I want to do with this video is help other people who are like me, who love music, who want to be good at music, and want to be able to play with other people, and maybe play in public, and be somewhat good at it. Now, on YouTube and other places, there are many, many videos on how to play different songs, or how to play, you know, 4,000 blues licks, or how to uh, plug your effects pedals in together. So that is great. So I'm not intending to do that with this format. You know, there are lots of people doing that well already. What I would like to do is help people just get from here to here, because that's been the trickiest part so far. Learning songs is not that big a deal. Plugging in your effects pedals is not that big a deal. But no one ever explained to me what's involved in this. I had to figure it out on my own. So to start off with, today I would like to talk about rhythm. So, what is rhythm? Well, rhythm is the time aspect of music. Not as in how much time you waste of your life playing music, but rather how fast you play things, or how slow you play them, and what's the feel of the time? Is it uh, swing, straight, whatever? What's the beat of the music? That's all rhythm. So I think this is the single trickiest thing for people going from being alone to in the group. So why is that? Well, I think a lot of people are like me in that they never really learned how does rock and roll rhythm work. So let's talk about what the drums are doing on any given song. So what does this mean for a guitar player? Well first of all it means Whenever the drums are doing something, whether it be kicking or snaring, you should be playing something. You should be playing your chord that you're working on. But, what if just one, two, three, four, what if you want a little more than that? What if that's not enough for you? What if you're incredibly ambitious? Well, if you're playing rock and roll, you're probably going to want to play eighth notes, which means you're playing your chord eight times every bar. But, how does that line up with this? Well, good news. Your drummer will also be playing th something eight times every bar. What is that? Probably the hi-hat or the ride cymbal. So, you can kind of stick that in between here. So they'll be playing their hi-hat cymbal. You can kind of put that up here. They'll be playing that on the one, two, three, four, but in between they'll be playing it on the and of one, two, three, four. So one and two and three and four and regularly. One and two and three and four. So what does that mean for you in the guitar, as the guitar player? You too must be playing one and two and three and four and every bar. Now, this is a pretty simple idea, but the trouble is when you play by yourself, you get to decide how fast this happens, or whether you want it to happen. But when you're playing with the drummer, you cannot do that. Whatever the drummer has decided, that's what you're going to play.
but what if that's too many times for you? You just don't want to play that many notes in a bar. Well, good news, you don't have to. The secret is to only be playing on one of these beats. So you can do some pretty cool funky stuff if you want, as long as it lines up with one of these beats that the drummer's doing. A common Motown uh, style rhythm guitar is to just play on the two and four on the snare. That's a good way to do it. Or you can only play on one, two, three, four if you want. That's okay too. You can really change it up depending on how you feel or how the song you're playing is supposed to go as long as you're on that grid. That's the key. This is where so many uh, guitar players go wrong going from playing alone to with other people is they don't understand that you have to be playing when everybody else is playing and when they're not playing you must not play. Everything has to line up. So why is it so hard changing your mindset from playing alone to playing with other people? Why is there this big gap? Music is music, right? Well, that's true. The problem is when you're playing by yourself, it's kind of like driving by yourself in your car. When you're driving by yourself, you can decide where you want to go and you can decide how fast you want to go. It's up to you. But when you're driving a bus, it's not up to you how fast you go or when you stop or where do you go. That's part of a bigger plan. So going from playing alone to playing with other people is like going from driving the car to driving a bus. So when you're driving the bus, you have to know the route. You have to know the speed you're going. You have to be prepared. You're driving the car. You can do that if you want, but you don't have to. So in the same way, when you're playing your guitar by yourself at home, you can decide how much of the song you want to learn. You can decide how fast you want to play it. You can decide if you want to speed it up at the end or slow it down. But when you're playing in a group, then those decisions are not just up to you. Okay, so we've found the problem and we realize why it's so important now to get better at that. So how do we do that? Well, one really easy but effective way is to, uh, when you're learning a new song, don't just uh, you know look up the chords or look up the tab and then just start playing by yourself. Do that, but bring up the original song that you're learning uh, in your iTunes or on YouTube or whatever and play along with the original recording. And uh, that way you'll get used to the sound of your guitar with the rest of the ensemble, especially the drums and you can listen to how the guitar and the drums, how they line up. What's the guitar doing uh, on the kick drum hits or on the snare drum hits? Is it just steady all the time? Or is it kind of like a, well, certain beats are accented, like uh, the snare drum uh, beats, are those accented on the guitar as well? So those are things to just kind of listen for and then once you're used to hearing what that sounds like, then you'll hear it everywhere. And before you know it, it'll become second nature. So that's just one way you can improve in your timing and get just slightly better at playing music.